I got the train to Ireland. We announced our engagement. I had a great holiday. Tony kept the survey running, piled the charts unanalyzed on my desk. I came back after Christmas. No sign of Tony, but quite clear what I had to do. And I started doing chart analysis. Looking at another piece of chart. Oh, yep. Which one's that? What? It's not either? It's a third? Gosh. Right, okay, I'd better just finish this piece of chart and then I'll come back and check on this one, make a note. So pass on. What? Two? Three foot apart? At that point, my supervisor, Tony, appears. Look, Tony! Oh, Happy New Year. Look at this, Tony. How many more have you missed? Go back through all your old records. They're about three kilometers by this stage. But we didn't find any more, and we confirmed the third and the fourth. So it turns out to be a new kind of star. Totally undreamt of, hugely exciting. They're called pulsars, short for pulsating radio stars. And this is the kind of picture we have of them. And by mechanism we still don't understand properly, a beam of radio waves comes out of that kind of funnel shape there is at the magnetic poles and sweeps around the sky. And if that sweeping thing falls on the Earth, we see a pulse, pulse, pulse. It's a bit like a lighthouse sweeping a beam around the horizon. And just as lighthouses are used for navigation, come the time when we travel through space in spaceships, we'll use these things as navigation beacons because we'll have a radio telescope, one of these big dishes, strapped to the side of our spaceship, and we steer it around, and we say, yep, there's that pulsar, yep. There's that one. There's that one. So we're here. The technology at the moment means you wouldn't so much strap a radio telescope on the side of your spaceship, a strap your spaceship on the side of a radio telescope. But, you know, the techniques are changing very, very fast.